Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Now, if you're applying for uni in the UK for either maths, computer science, or economics, you've probably heard of something called the TMUA. Now, what exactly is it, why does it matter, and when should you be taking it? These are all questions I'm going to be answering in today's video. And if you stick around to the end, I'm going to be giving my advice on how best to prepare for these exams. So if you're ready, let's get into it. So, the TMUA, otherwise known as the Test of Mathematics for University Admissions, is a university entrance exam to some of the UK's top universities. It's two separate 75 minute exams, but these are sat back to back. So in essence, it's just a two and a half hour exam that's split into two sections. Unlike STEP or MAT, the TMUA is purely multiple choice. So there's no long written solutions, you just need to pick the right answer. What that means is that your logic, your accuracy, and crucially your speed need to be spot on. Now, each paper is 20 questions and both of them are non-calculator. So that means there is a lot of algebra involved and a lot of mental maths. Now, the two papers test slightly different things. Paper one's more about how accurate and quick you can be with your maths. Whereas paper two is more about how well and how deep you understand the maths that you're doing. These papers are perfect for differentiating between different A-level students at the stage where you're giving out offers as it gives a benchmark for everybody and puts them kind of on an equal playing field. Now, not every course requires the team you wear. Some might want STEP or MAT, or some just don't actually need any additional exams. So the first thing you need to do is check whether the course you're wanting to apply for needs it, recommends it, or just ignores it completely. Now, at the time of recording this video, there are six universities that currently use TMUA. And I've put a list up with all the specific details about which courses require it versus which ones recommend it. Now, this list is subject to change. Please do your own research and look into the course that you're applying for. As you can see, it's kind of the computer science and economics side that normally require it, whereas the math subjects actually are more on the side of only recommending it. Another thing to think about is that even if your course doesn't require the TMUA, having a good TMUA score on your record can help you shine, especially in some of those competitive courses. Okay, so we know that the TMUA is two papers, but what do you actually need to know for each exam? Let's break it down. So, paper one, applications of mathematical knowledge. This paper is aimed at testing your mathematical knowledge of AS maths. So that's just the year 12 stuff. No A-level maths should be needed. Okay, so what does that include? Well, there's lots of algebra and functions, the sequences and series, straight lines and circles, trig, exponentials and logarithms, differentiation, integration, graphing, ratios, geometry, stats, and probability. Okay, so then moving on to paper two. This one's mathematical reasoning. So it tests your logic, proofs, deductions, and then spotting errors in other people's arguments. This paper relies on all the same topics as paper one, so those are the ones we've just listed. However, the whole paper is aimed at stretching your mathematical knowledge, making sure you truly understand why you're doing the math that you're doing. Why does differentiation work? Why does integration work? Where are stationary points? What is a stationary point? That kind of thing. So it involves a lot of proof. So you should be able to understand the following proof methods. So that's direct proof, proof by contradiction, proof by exhaustion, and then disproof by counterexample. You should also be able to understand statements that involve if, only if, if and only if, and then you should be able to know the difference between necessary and sufficient conditions. Okay, so now we get into the scoring, where it gets a little bit confusing. Now, every question is worth one mark, 40 questions in total, and there is no penalty whatsoever for wrong answers. This raw score out of 40 is then converted into a grade. That grade is scored from one to a nine, with nine being the highest. Now, the conversion from mark to grade changes every year, and it's not readily made available some previous ones are out there. I can show you one on screen now. This is a graph of the conversion between score and grade for 2023. And then we can use some more information from the TMUA to create a graph of raw score against percentile in which you come. This is useful because universities mainly care about where you come relative to others, not necessarily your score or your grade. So here we can see the average score is around 17, which converts to around a four to a 4.5. Now, don't look into these grades too much. They do tend to change from year to year, and there's been a rumour that since 2024, they've significantly reduced everybody's grades, but universities know this and they'll drop their scores accordingly. Now on this graph, I'm showing the percentile achieved for both 2021 and 2024. And in the 2024 graph, we can see that it's shifted to the left, meaning that getting into the same percentile gives you a lower grade. 
Now, this is a pretty rough estimate, but what we can do is we can try and work out a conversion between the new grades and the old grades because we can look at the similar percentiles. So on the right, I've got a conversion between new grade and old grade, and then I'm using that previous graph to work out what score you will need. Now, bear in mind, this is a very rough estimate and generally changes from year to year, and this is a conversion between 2021 and 2024. But well, hold on to that thought a second, because what makes this really confusing is that universities put no requirement on the TMUA. All they state is aim to do the best that you can which isn't really helpful, it, it's true, you should always try to do your best, but not really helpful. Now, there is a little bit of information out there on the grades needed, and we can use that to infer some of the others. So previous offer holders for Warwick and Durham scored around a five, whereas Cambridge, it was a, closer to a seven. And you should be able to use this to have a rough guess at what grade you should need for your course in university. And then you can use that along with the previous graphs to approximate the score that you will need when you're practicing those papers and when it comes to the actual exam. A general rule of thumb is to aim for about a 6 to a 6.5 because that puts you in the top 10 to 15%, which is in good stead for any of the competitive courses out there. So when is the TMUA and when should you say it? Well, you can actually sit it at two different times. There's either October or there's January. And you can generally sit both, except if you're applying to Cambridge, you have to do the October sitting. This is because they do their interviews in around December time, so they need to have your scores ready by then so they can assess them prior to the interview. So make sure you get in for the October sitting. Okay, so here are the key dates. Now, they might change each year, so please do check, but for the 2025 26 dates, they are 13th of October, 2025, or 8th of Jan, 2026. Now, importantly, the last date to register for each of these is 29th of September and 19th of December, respectively. And now it's important to know that the papers cost £75 to sit. However, they do offer a bursary scheme to reduce the cost. The deadline to apply for this is actually much earlier, so please have a look. If you need it, apply early. Okay, so we've been over the general information about the TMUA, but what's my actual advice for sitting the paper? The first thing you should notice is that it's a very quick exam especially paper one. There's 75 minutes, 20 questions. That's three minutes, 45 per question. That's, it's not a lot of time. So what does that mean? Well, it means that you need to be on top of all the AS maths topics. You need to have those basics down because in the exam, you're gonna to need to be very accurate and very quick. So your algebra needs to be on point. You need to be able to differentiate, integrate, apply formulas easily and quickly. So if you're not confident with these, revising them is where you wanna start. You also want to be doing lots and lots of papers. Here, the questions aren't generally too complicated, but what you need is to be quick. So make sure you're doing a lot of practice. The more practice you do, the quicker you get. Now for paper two, this one's all about your logic. So this is the paper that you probably want a bit more practice on because it's very different from the A-level questions you'll have attempted. You want to go through a lot of different questions and take your time to evaluate each of the different options. This paper you want to take slower. You want to consider all the possible answers, make sure you're picking the right ones. A lot of progress on the questions in paper two can be made by just considering different examples or different counter examples to eliminate options that just cannot be true. Now, if you've won a few lessons in logic because it's not something that's considered really at A-level, Brilliant.org, not sponsored, offer a few good courses that fit really well as an intro to these kind of logic questions. And if you're looking for some more difficult problems, there's a book I've had recommended to me called The Art and Craft of Problem Solving. Now it's quite a long book, it's about 400 pages, and it isn't super applicable to the TMUA, but can help if you're looking for some more advanced problems. Now for some advice for the actual exam, well, the fact that it's a multiple choice exam and you don't lose marks for the wrong answers, you may as well, if you're running out of time, go and answer the final questions, just picking randomly. If you've got time, see if you can eliminate some obviously incorrect answers. That'll always put you in good stead. But always, always, always give an answer to every single question. There is no harm in just randomly picking. Now with the TMUA being such a fast paced exam, if you don't know how to solve a problem straight away, move on and come back. There'll be some problems you just see immediately and then some you just don't. But you don't have much time in the exam to first understand the problem and then solve it. So just do the ones you can and come back to the ones that you struggled with. Okay, so my final piece of advice is the opposite of what I give for step. Because how you write in the TMUA 
does not matter in the slightest. It's a multiple choice exam. You just need to be quick and you just need to be accurate. So the way you write is completely up to you. Just make sure you understand it and you can read it if you need to come back to it. Okay, that's just a quick summary of the TMUA. So if you're thinking of applying to any of these universities, please, please, please start and have a look. Do you need to sit the TMUA? And if you do, please start and practice early. You don't want it to get to September and you haven't done a single thing. This test could make a real big difference in your application. Now, if you want me to do a bit of a walkthrough of a past TMUA paper, please let me know in the comments. And remember to like and subscribe for more uni preparation content. See you in the next one.